ameliorating the glycemic variability and staying in range with ultra long acting basal analog insulins the financial disclosure was for dr tucker i am not getting paid anything for this so the glycemic variability we're talking about the key concept the implications and the role of ultra long basal analog we know the glycemic variability the definition i am sure this august gathering does not require an introduction as this this is the disadvantage of the glycemic variability wherein you see the peaks and troughs and which will not be measured in routine clinical practice without cgm and the within day <coughs> within the variability of hyperglycemia and hypoglycemia is missed you can see two patients profile which are shown here as patient a sorry sir yeah yeah, yeah. okay <laughs> we are running a competition with our governor so <laughs> so the within day variability the intraday variability will not be picked up as you can see there the so much fluctuations with intraday and interday variability which in routine clinical practice will not able to measure these are the measurement indices the amplitude of glycemic excursions the time spent outside range and includes both that is how you measure so the amplitude is as it's clearly indicated the standard deviation and coefficient of variation these are all statistical numbers while most physicians in clinical practice are familiar with the use of standard deviation <coughs> the gv related research uti utilizes the cv that is sd divided by the mean is something coefficient of variation now the measuring the gv how do you do it practically the time spent outside the target that is the time spent in hypo or hyperglycemia as a measure of glycemic variability so the international consensus what do they talk about this through the cgm they have defined this incremental 5% increase in this tir is associated with clinically significant benefits for both type 1 and type 2 this is the international consensus published in diabetes care in 2019 where you have to spend 70 to 80 180 mg target range and more than 50% in type 1 older or high risk type 2 diabetes or in type 1 and type 2 in general it is more than 70% of the times you need to spend in the range of 70 to 180 that's called time in range or tir time above range there are two segments again more than 180 more than 250 that is less than 25% less than 5% that is what you should spend so the people should have less in that and of course time below range i'm talking only about the first bar and that is 4% and 1% respectively below 70 and below 54 below 54 is called severe symptomatic hypoglycemia less than 70 is a hypoglycemia amplitude of glycemic excursions time spent outside range this is the both one and two what we are talking about today and let us look at why is it important what does it result in the implications the glycemic variability and risk of non severe hypoglycemia which will affect the quality of life of patients are you can see the relationship there very clearly the tighter control as a higher hypos because of higher variability with the treatment if variability is low you can still achieve the tighter control but with a lower episodes of hypoglycemia remember in practice it's the hypoglycemia what we counter, uh, counter and the efficaciousness or the safety is always measured in an insulin trial with respect to the safety that is in the form of hypoglycemia so you can very clearly see there the hypoglycemia sound what is it related and this is the implication the oxidative stress and eventually the complication risk worsens with your glucose fluctuations that is why we should have a insulin which can reduce the variability to the minimal so this is the pathophysiological illustration where the impact of excessive glycation of proteins ac ac activation of oxidative stress and the three components the fasting hyper Uh, postprandial and the glucose fluctuation eventually results in risk of complications again glycemic variability and maize and all, car all cause mortality you can see in the slide where there is a increasing fasting glycemic variability means the patient will get increased risk of maize and all cause mortality sorry reducing glycemic variability the role of ultra long basal analog so what do we have in the basket now for treating we definitely have deglutac when compared to glargin and this is evidence we have a better insulin this is a rct two year randomized crossover study wherein it clearly showed the coefficient of variation look at the drop significantly lower 
with Degludac. The diurnal is comparable, the nocturnal hypoglycemia. Degludac has been always placed, it's compared with a nocturnal hypoglycemia better than the overall comparable 24 hour glycemia. Significantly lower GV with Degludac and that is what happens. In this study, 12 weeks Degludac showed lower glycemic parameters with coefficient of variation and SD better in this. This was of course a prospective pilot study which was conducted in the hospital, in hospital. This is again another evidence to show switch pro RCT study which is Degludac versus Glargin U100 again. You can see the study design there very clearly Degludac OAD, uh, OD plus or minus OADs and Glargin similar switched over after 18 weeks of exposure to each individual drugs. It's a crossover study and ended at the end of uh, 34 weeks. And what did show? Superiority of Degludac was confirmed and estimated treatment difference is significant of 20 minutes per day or 1.43% the time in range in favor of Degludac when compared to the Glargin. The time in tight glycemic control, again, the estimated treatment difference is significant statistically and overall tight, time in tight glycemic range that is between 70 to 140 was achieved in the Degludac arm compared to your Glargin arm. More patients definitely achieved the clinically significant improvement in the TIR and that's the best part. And of course, nocturnal time below range, time below range, that means hypoglycemic episodes. You can see the three levels are how much it is reduced with the Degludac compared to Glargin. This is the latest publication in April ATTD in Barcelona this year. It's called in-range study where Degludac and Glargin U300, which is supposed to be lesser hypoglycemic, they compared CGM-based RCT, multicentric, and these are the results you can see, TIR, A1C, and time above range, all of them had a positive effect. 44 minutes, 44 minutes, you can see there in the bottom, and the HB1C was lower in the Degludac arm. So to conclude, striving to achieve near normal glycemia and avoiding glycemic fluctuations are key main objectives of diabetes management. Increasing glycemic variability increases the risk of hypoglycemia, maize and all-cause events. Options to reduce this risk of glycemic variability should be considered when you choose the right drug and ultra long basal analog like Degludac definitely reduces the glycemic variability by improving time in range. Thank you very much for patient hearing.